a class I mean, I'd work on the module 7 study guide with you guys. Uh, study guide's pretty straightforward. Most of you guys were able to finish most of it. Um, I just want to do a couple of problems that I think we're getting you guys stumped on. So, like, number one says, select the triangle congruence criteria that can be used to prove the two triangles are congruent. So, if I look at my picture, again, I told you guys today that your picture, I have the dash marks in for you guys. But on your test, I'm going to tell you the actual congruence statement. So, congruence... So what we're going to do, congruent statement. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys write down each congruent statement and you're going to use that to solve it. And then like tomorrow, you're going to do it the other way around. You're going to use this, the congruent statements to draw the dashes so you can solve it. So let's get started. Um, all right. So I see these little dash marks right here. Let me do this in a different color. Well, I see the angle dash marks. So I see these angle dash marks. They both have the same. So one of the first statements I see is angle B is congruent to angle A. So that's true. I know this is a angle. Second dash I see is these sides. So angle, angle, and I also see these sides. So side, side. So then I know, hold on one second, so I know a side is true, so I know that side AE, because what I'm doing is I'm looking at this dash, and I'm looking at the two letters at the end, AE, is congruent to BE, so I know those are true, so AE is congruent to BE. And then this is the part where some of you guys got stuck in thinking, okay, where's the rest at? I, I talked to some of you guys and I told you guys, okay, you notice how they're both touching the corners. And some of you guys said, oh, they're congruent because they're both touching the corners. But I wanted you to remember what that's called. That's called vertical angles, remember? So vertical angles. So because, well, vertical angles mean when the two, um, the triangles are touching on the same corner. So because they're touching in the same corner, we know that these two triangles are congruent. So like, even though these two triangles are the same, we do know that they, they're they sharing the same angle. So I know these angles are congruent. But remember, the trick is, the problem is that these two angles, because they both have E, we have to give it a name. So remember, the trick is you write the angle. Like how you would normally. E is in the middle for both of them. But you pick the letter on the left and the letter on the right. So I'm going to do the bottom one first. So the bottom one, if I look, I see E. Letter on the left is A. So I'm going to put A, E. Letter on the right is D. Pretty straightforward. Do the same thing for the top one. C is on the left. C, E, B. And that's pretty much it. And if you look, oh, look how convenient. That spells angle side angle. And if you weren't sure, follow the letters. That also spells angle side angle. So this is angle side angle, not angle angle side. Remember, for it to be angle angle side, you have a triangle where two angles are congruent, but the side that's not in the middle of your guys' two angles is angle angle side. Notice how it goes in that order. Alright. I'm gonna skip number two. Skip number three. Those are pretty straightforward. Number four I'm only gonna do some. I'm gonna do the last one and um the third one. So the third one states triangle A E, -E B or not angle A E B. So let's do this. Angle A E B is congruent to angle A. Let me do this in a different color. E D. <laughs> they are vertical angles. Again, like how I talk to you guys. Vertical angles are two angles <coughs> that 
they share the same corner, but that's it. They only share the same corner. Notice how this one shares the same side, right? Whoops, hold on. Let me do this in a different color. This one. They both share this side right here. Oh, let me do it in black. They both share this side. Since they both share this side, these are called adjacent angles or just angles that are next to each other. So these are actually called adjacent angles. So they're not vertical angles, so this is false. So pretty straightforward. Since they're sharing a side and not a corner, they are not vertical angles. Let's help with the last one now. So to prove triangle A, let's just a different color. A, E, B, so this triangle, and C, E, B, so this triangle, with SSS, we need to know if side AB is current to side CD. So to prove SSS, we know that these two sides are congruent, so that's S. This is side congruent to itself, and we want to know if this one gets the three dashes. But now think about it. We're trying to prove all we know or all we want to use is that AB is congruent to CD. So again, oh, that's really ugly. Hold on. There we go. AB is congruent to CD. So again, we want to show if those two are congruent. Well, if you look at your paper, this side and then this side are congruent. Think about this way. If you want to know these two sides are congruent, this side and this side, yeah, it tells you that this side is congruent to this bottom side. So like, let's just put a, so like we know these two sides are congruent. I don't know what to put, mark it. But that doesn't tell you anything about this side. You don't really, honestly, you don't even know anything about that side. So, if anything, think about it, it's like extra information. You don't need to know it, so you don't. It doesn't help. So because it doesn't help, you don't need to know it. So, false. It doesn't help. One and two are pretty straightforward. So, I think you guys can handle those. So, how about number five? That's a problem, because the rest you guys can do on your own. You guys have a foldable. You guys can look, do those, or if not, look it up. Uh, so we have I is the midpoint of CM. So we're going to write that down. That's our given, right? I is the midpoint. I'm going to abbreviate midpoint of CM. Remember, we write that because that's our given. It's a freebie. That's a free point right there. So we know I is the midpoint of CM. We also know I is the midpoint of BL. It's also a given. Sorry, that I mean, probably scared you guys. So, because we know definition of midpoint, if not look at your notes, remember definition of midpoint was if you have a point in the middle, then these two sides are congruent. They're the same. So, if I is the midpoint, that means this side and this side are congruent. So we know CI is congruent to MI because definition of midpoint, right? Because you know that, you know this part. And then same thing for I as a midpoint of BL. Because you know I as a midpoint of BL, then you know these two sides are congruent. So BI is congruent to LI. And also, again, that's only because you know the definition of midpoint. That's the rule. If a point's in the middle, both sides are congruent. We talked about this. Check your notebook. We talked about it in the definitions. Okay. Now, Think about what we said earlier. You guys notice that these two triangles are touching by a corner. We call that vertical angles. Here, they're touching by a corner. So we know these two angles are congruent by vertical angles. But here's the thing. 
you have to tell me this is a vertical angle before you say that they're congruent. So all you have to do is just say, oh, those are vertical angles. I is a vertical angle. So you have to say it before you say congruent statement. If you don't, you're telling me something's congruent, but you don't, you're not saying, you're not establishing what happened first. So all you're honestly going to say is I is a vertical angle. And you know this by, well, intersecting lines, but you just say a definition of vertical and then angle. So you have to say that's an angle first, because now you can say that those two angles are congruent. And because they both have angle I, you have to use three letters. So this is C. I-L, because I is in the middle since it's the corner letter, C-I-L, since it makes a corner, I, you have to go from C to I to L, or you could say L-I-C, either one is fine. Same thing with the other side, B-I-M or M-I-B, I'm going to do M-I-B, it makes me think of men in black. You know this is true, because again, definition of vertical angles, this time I'm going to abbreviate vertical angles. You can abbreviate vertical angles with VA. And now, let's think about this. Let's see what we try to prove. We proved that this is a side. Let's, let's go back to, let's do a purple. We said so this is a side. This is an angle. This is another side that spells S-A-F. Angles in the middle, so we know this is S-A-S. So by S-A-S, that's our reason, we know those two triangles are congruent. Triangle CIL is congruent to triangle um, triangle MIB. And honestly, oh no, triangle, I don't know why I put angle, sorry. Triangle. And that's pretty straightforward. Hopefully that helps. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you guys study.